There is a place we want to go to, to be at with all our heart. A place we desire to be above all other places. A location of incomparable joy. A place where pain, suffering, and sorrow do not exist. A place where pleasures forevermore await us. Beside the still waters, listening to the voice of our Savior, hearing, joining in and rejoicing and praising His holy name throughout all of eternity. A place of eternal peace and love. But we must be patient. In your patience, possess ye your souls. While we remain here, we are not to join in with those of this world. We are not to have within ourselves as they do, a searching for the next fulfilling enjoyments of this world. Our lives are not to be spent seeking that which will fade away, that which will be burned up in fervent heat. We are not to be as those who walk in darkness, but as those who walk in the light of the risen Savior. We are to be set apart. We are to be sanctified by His Holy Spirit. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. But we are also not to hide that which we know by faith to be true. We are not to keep to ourselves the gift that is available to all mankind. And so, we must go out into that world which we detest, into the darkness with the light of the living God. We are to search for those who are lost amongst the wicked, those who will despise us, mock us, hate us, persecute, and if they can, if they are allowed to by our Father in heaven, kill us. The poor, the destitute, the rich, and the famous, those who live their lives in vain glory and pride, those who believe themselves to be good people, the religious people who base their lives on some form of works they believe will find favor in the eyes of the Almighty. We seek for the lost amongst them daily, and we offer them the same that we have been blessed to receive the knowledge of the gift of salvation to all who would believe. Freely you have received, freely give. It is a rare day indeed for those who have been born again to walk beside the still waters, where Psalms 23.3 is a truth in their lives at that moment. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Most days will be spent in repetition, performing those daily chores, working by the sweat of our brow and accepting at the Lord's hands that which He has provided for us. Those daily chores, though, at times, are intermixed with opportunities to witness for Him whom we serve. And those opportunities must not be missed. Nearly every day there is an occasion to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to the glory of God. And there is almost always someone that will at least listen. We are to speak the truths that have been revealed to us. And sometimes, though rare, we are blessed to be in the presence of that incomparable joy when those we are speaking to actually hear those truths. Some will listen politely but with no intention to hear. Their lives are what they have made them. They see no need for repentance, for they are good people. They have never intentionally harmed anyone. Their deeds go before them in their minds as acceptable to the Almighty. Mistakes made by them in this life are not seen as sin, but as nothing more than inadvertent actions, words or deeds, which would not cause the one they claim to know as God to punish them for. Our adversary will stop at nothing to hinder us from the tasks that have been set before us. All that our Father in Heaven has allowed Him to do to us, He will do. But we have an intercessor in heaven. We have a close kinsman in our Savior. We have been blessed to have one who protects and guides us in the Holy Spirit. We are not unaware of the wiles of Satan. We have been blessed with the armor of God himself, and the truth of Romans 8.28 offers us a peace that passes all understanding. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Expect to lose everyone whom you ever considered a friend. Expect family members to attempt to hinder that which has been set before you, to cause you to cease from that which you have been called to do. And do so because of a love for Him who first loved you. 
Expect the wicked to behave wickedly towards you. Expect the world to hate you, my friends. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. We grow weary in the work at times, for the path to the straight gate is hard. We stumble at times because of the flesh that serves the law of sin, our old nature that rebels against us at every turn. We tire of trying to reach those that we are sent to. We feel worn out at times trying to fight through the darkness, wearing the heavy burden of the armor of God given unto us, carrying our cross for His glory. And at times we say with Jeremiah, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart, as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. We are allowed to come back here at times to refresh our soul, to contemplate the goodness of God, to sit beside the still water and reflect upon his grace and mercies. But the battle continues and we are not lax in our duties to him who has called us. We fight the good fight. We stand when others flee. We speak while many hold their tongue. And we will not be silenced by those who would attempt to cause us to fear. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The day is coming when that final door will be opened and we will be welcomed into the living God's eternal kingdom of peace and joy, where the wicked will have no entrance granted to them, where pleasures forevermore await us, where the singing of his praises will come as naturally to us as the rejoicing we have in our hearts today does. The work set before us is not meant to be easy, my friends. The road is not meant to be smooth. Our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ is meant to grow as our lives unfold before us for His glory. But in every step we can see that straight gate. At every turn we can sing the praises of His name. And when we get to our eternal home, every voice there, all our brothers and sisters in the Lord, will join in the eternal choir praising His name. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. We see through this glass darkly today, but we have been blessed to see all that truly matters, all that will matter throughout all eternity, the face of Him who gave all for us.